Okay, in this video, we're going to introduce the ideas of probability and counting. So we're going to start this with this puzzle. You have three pairs of colored socks that are sitting loose in your drawer. It's night out and none of your lights will work, so you can't see anything. So you grab a sock and then you grab another one. And we want to find out what is the probability that you end up with two socks of the same color. So think about this for a minute. If you grab one and then another, and you've got three pairs that are all different, like the images shown, what's the probability of getting a pair? Now, the way I like to think about this is you choose the first one randomly, and it could be of any of those three pairs. Then you want to look at the remaining socks left and see how many of, uh, and, and see how many of them there are and how many would match our sock. And from that, you can come up with the probability. So let's write that out. We grab a sock. How many are left? There are five socks left. Out of those five, one will match the sock we first pulled out, and four will not match. Which gives us one in five chance of having a matching pair. So one out of five is equal to 0 0.2, which is equal to 20%. So we have a 20% probability of getting a matching pair. Okay, let's try another one. Here, this antenna array, and it's illustrated right here. All right, we have five antennas in a row, and we're gonna say this antenna array is considered functional as long as three consecutive antennas are working properly. So if this last one is no longer working properly, then we're still okay because we have more than three in this remaining group of four that are together. But if this middle one doesn't work, then we're out of luck because we only have two here and two here. There aren't three in a row. Now, given that, uh, it turns out that exactly one of the antennas is defective. So we want to figure out what is the probability that the resulting, resulting array will be functional. You might be able to eyeball this and figure it out, but let's go on and see through, do the math. So first, an important term is sample space. The sample space is a set of all possible outcomes. So I'm going to draw that out now, and I'm going to use ones for a working antenna and zeros for a broken antenna. So if we start with the first one broken, and the other's all working, we know exactly one is broken, or it could be the second one. Or it could be the third one. And so on. All the way to it being the last one. All right, so this is called our sample space. And it lays out every possible option given that exactly one antenna is broken. So, we want to find the probability that the event where probability of the event where the array is functional. OK, 
Okay. And again, this notion, this idea, the event where the array is functional, this is called the event. We're going to call it E. The sample space is often called S. So let's see which of these events mean the array is functional. Well, this first one's functional because we've got more than three in a row that work. Second one's functional, so that's got more than uh, three in a row that work. The third one isn't, Whoa. but the last two are. So the size of our event space is four. So the size of our event equals four. The size of our sample space is five. And we can calculate this probability as we say we have four events out of five possibilities. And this is going to get us four fifths equals 0 0.8 equals 80%. Right? So we have an 80% chance. We have an 80% chance of having a functional array. So what we used to calculate the pr probability of having a functional antenna array is sometimes called the equally likely probability formula. And this occurs when we have a finite sample space, right? we have S, a finite sample space, in which all the outcomes are equally likely. That's really important. If some outcomes are more likely than others, then this won't work. But this is kind of like flipping a coin, if there's equal likelihood um, we can use this probability formula. Um, e is an event in S, so we can calculate the probability of E as the number of outcomes in E over the total number of outcomes in S. And this is sometimes written as the size of E over the size of S. Okay, and this is the probability of that event occurring. Okay, so let's look at a different example. Here we've got a pair of dice. So we've got two dice. I'm going to call them one and two. And I want to list my sample space of all possible outcomes. Well, I'm going to list it in this little chart here where the first dice is value is the first number and dice number two's example is the second number. All right? So we can lay out all possible options like this which gives us a sample space of size 36. Because right, it's six on each side, so six times six is 36. Well, we want to figure out this event E, that the numbers showing face up sum to six. Well, let's take a look at our chart. One plus five sums to six. Two plus four, three plus three, four plus two, five plus one. Those are the only ones that sum to six. And so we can say, we can recall our, our uh, class E to equal set E, there we go, set E to be those, um, what are that, five elements. So we have 15, 24, 33, 42, and 51. which, and recall the equally likely probability formula, these are all equally likely, they're random dice, there's not gonna be bias. So I can say the probability of E occurring is gonna be the size of E really annoying. The size of E over the size of S. Well, the size of E is five, the size of S is 36, so this is going to give us 13.9%. So 
So there's a 13.9% chance of having your pair of dice land with the sum of six on the top. And this is really interesting. So if you ever play dice games, you can actually calculate the probability of what you're looking for and see if you're playing Parcheesi and you want an eight, you know, what's the probability of having the sum of the two uh, dice add up to an eight? Well, you can figure that out. It's kind of cool. So now let's see about the probability of having a sum of five or more. Well, once again, we have to figure out our event because this is gonna be the size of the event over the size of the sample space. So we know the size of the sample space is 36. What's the size of the event? Well, if you come in here and you look at the different values, you can see that four plus one um, is five or greater. 3 plus 2 is 5 or greater, but 2 plus 2 isn't. And you'll see it works out to this nice subset right here. This subset are all the dice options that roll to a sum of 5 or more. And if you count those up, you're going to find that there's 30 of them in there. And what this is going to mean is that we have an 83.3% probability of, of having a sum of five or more. Now what's interesting is this little set that we have left over. All right, this blue set is E, and this smaller set is E complement. So we can actually calculate the probability of E is also equal to one minus the probability of E complement. Because remember, probabilities always add to, have to add up to 100. So more or less with this one, we're saying 100% minus whatever the probability of this smaller set is, is gonna give us the probability of the larger set. So if you work this out, this is gonna be one minus, now there's six here out of 36 which is going to give 1 minus 16.6%. So that means the probability of E complement is 16.6%. And if you work that out, you're going to get that is 83.3%. The same thing we got up here. Right? So these are two different ways of calculating the complement, or excuse me, of calculating the probability of an event.